Hi everyone and welcome to another video on the history of medicine. Now if you remember, if you've been following, having a look at the other videos, we've covered the whole course now. There's a lot to learn, so watch those videos throughout the year. Don't just leave them right till examination time. Do your revision throughout the year, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we've covered the course, it's all there for you. I'm going to finish off with three or four little videos which are going to give you a summary of the main themes, the main ideas running through the whole course, medicine 1250 to the present day. And we're going to start with the cause of disease. See it there, ladies and gentlemen. The different ideas throughout the medicine course of what they believed caused disease. Now, the first thing you have to do is understand chronology. Chronology comes from an old word, chronos, which means time. You've got to get the periods of history in the correct chronological order. Medieval, Renaissance, Industrial Revolution, modern times. Now, to make it easy for you, med, ren, ind, mod. Simple. Med, ren, ind, mod. Med, ren, ind, mod. Med, ren, ind, mod. Med, ren, ind, mod. Put it in your head so that you've got it there. Medieval, Renaissance, Industrial Revolution, modern times. Now, as you should know, some of the causes of disease were followed for many, many centuries, and then we get change. What I've done here is put the main ideas on a piece of paper. Please feel free to freeze the screen and use this, or develop your own and have it then as a revision resource for you. There it is, look. All the different causes in medieval times, the Renaissance, Industrial Revolution, and modern. Now, let's have a look. You'll see the idea that God somehow was causing the disease was strong in medieval times. It was still there a bit in the Renaissance and for the first bit of the Industrial Revolution. God as a cause of disease. Why would that be? Any ideas? Well, of course, it links to their way of life. They were not as scientific then, so therefore it made perfect sense. It was logical for them to believe that God, they all believed in religion, God was all powerful, so God was in charge of disease. God in medieval times, Renaissance, and for part of the Industrial Revolution. But then it changes, and very few people believe that today. Why did that change? The importance of science and individuals like Louis Pasteur. Hopefully you've got all of that germ theory. The second major idea, planets and the stars, strong in medieval times, also believed in the Renaissance. But then after that, no, we have the change. People do not believe that the planets or the stars, the position, cause our disease. Why would they do it in medieval times? Their lack of understanding of the real cause. It made sense to them for how they live their life and a bit of the Renaissance. But then as we get more scientific in the Renaissance, that idea stops and we do not have it today. So there's the first two. The third one, bad air, or what was later referred to as miasma. Bad air, bad smells. Well, in the medieval times, it made perfect sense. Think of the Black Death. 1340s, 1347, 1348, 1349. The streets of the towns and the cities were filthy. Now we know it's the fleas on the rats, but they didn't know that. They didn't have microscopes. All they could see was this terrible filth and they could smell the terrible smells. And then they saw people getting ill. Aha, bad air is making us ill. Carried on in Renaissance times and even into the Industrial Revolution. The towns, the cities, full of the factories, the smoke, the filth, bad air, miasma, the cholera epidemics, blamed initially on miasma and bad air. So there we see an idea running for five, six hundred years until it stopped. And what stopped that? 
Louis Pasteur and germ theory again. So there's the third major cause of disease. The fourth one, hopefully you'll know all about it, the four humours. Do you remember what they are? Bonus marks if you've said blood, phlegm, yellow bile, black bile. Now the four humours was an ancient Greek idea, but it carried on into the medieval times and into the Renaissance. People still use the books of Galen and Hippocrates. If you remember, King Charles II, now he'd helped set up the Royal Society, so he was very interested in science. Sadly, when he was on his deathbed, he was given treatment which was sort of almost medieval. He, he had blood drained from his body. They were still using the four humours, 1685. We see there that there is very little change until we get to the Industrial Revolution again. And the four humours idea is no more. It has changed due to Louis Pasteur. So there's the four original cause of disease ideas. Now, let's move forward into the Industrial Revolution. Spontaneous generation. As they got microscopes, yes, they're beginning to realize that there are these germs. They would see them, but they would see the germs in the wound. So at first they got the wrong idea. Aha, the body has created the germs. They didn't realize that the germs were coming in from outside. That came about 1861, Louis Pasteur and germ theory. That is the first huge breakthrough. That's the thing that begins to destroy these old ideas. So it's massively important. And there's a video on it and you can go and check it. Germ theory, 1861, breakthrough number one. The first really big, massive change. And of course, that carries on to modern times. But also in modern times, we have breakthrough number two. The importance of genetics and DNA, 1950s. Crick and Watson, there's a video on that. Also, we found that there is a link between our lifestyle, smoking, diet, exercise, and the cause of disease. Some diseases can be caused by that lifestyle, a bad lifestyle. So there's breakthrough number two. So we've had a huge change from about 1860 onwards in cause of disease. Now down here, what we see down here are reasons why we have these particular causes of disease. Galen's books, continuity, the importance of the church, not much change. The kings were very interested in fighting and war. That's what they spent their money on rather than health and medicine. So in medieval times, there's not much change. In the Renaissance, as regards cause, there's still not much change. There's still the tradition, Galen, Hippocrates, still belief in God. There's a little bit of change beginning to come in, a little bit of progress. Thomas Sydenham, I did a video on him. Go and have a look and see what Sydenham says in the Renaissance. But for the first two real uh, periods of time, medieval and Renaissance, as regards cause of disease, not much change. The change comes here, industrial rev. Why? Science, technology, microscopes, the individuals, government putting money in, finance. Here's the factors why we get change in the Industrial Revolution. And that carries on into modern times. Exactly the same thing. Better science, better technology, individuals working, research, teamwork, government, finance, breakthrough one, breakthrough two. There it is. Hopefully it'll be quite useful for you. Use mine, or better still, design your own. Because there could be a question on this in your exam. They could say, for example, explain one way how cause of disease was different in this period. Or explain how, one way how cause of disease was similar in this period. That's a typical question. Or they could ask you, Explain why progress in cause of disease happened over this period of time. 
or they might say not much progress happened in cause of disease over this time how much do you agree or advances in cause of disease were more significant in this period than that period how much do you agree and if they ask you how much do you agree you've got to be able to look at both sides of the argument and say yes I agree in this way because they did this this and this but no I disagree in this way because of this this and this and give your overall judgment that's how you would get high marks there could be a question on cause of disease there it is for you that's the overview that's the summary of course it's up to you to actually learn the facts learn the details and that's what the other videos hopefully will do so there's our first summary cause of disease i'll be back with a few other summaries over the next short period of time hope it's been useful as ever all the best now take care speak to you soon see you later